So I'm going to show now how to use the MSTAR DMT to model CSTR systems, or rather systems with inlets and outlets. Uh, this is a new feature available in DMT 1.1, uh, and there's a lot of associated modeling capabilities that come with this, including residence time analysis and prediction, um, uh, short circuiting analysis, etc. So um, uh, let's look at how we set these things up. And some of this should look familiar to current users. Now we have our regular simulation tab where we define fluid properties, outlet properties, resolution, etc. Note here the resolution is now defined in terms of number of points per domain length in the x direction as opposed to number of points per diameter. Uh, and the reason for that will become apparent in just a minute. So, uh, all right, let's go ahead and step through building a system. Some of these commands are new. Uh, again, we have our familiar geometry import and creation. Uh, here's some new stuff, specifying the domain size and any inlets and outlets. And there's this new option to add an RTD box, which I'll explain in, in just a minute. Again, let's just go ahead and build it and speak to it as we build the model. So let me go ahead and build a tank, or import a tank rather, that I created earlier in SolidWorks. Um, this is a, it's, it's a simple inlet outlet system, single inlet, single outlet. The DMT can handle arbitrary number of inlets and outlets, but this is just a very simple ca uh, canonical tank that has uh, readily available experimental data against which, against which we can compare. So we're gonna have an inlet out here at the top. We're gonna impose a constant velocity. We're gonna have an outlet here uh, with a specified outlet boundary, uh, just vacating to uh, atmosphere. And then fluid will obviously fill this tank and there'll be an impeller inside. Uh, so there's my tank. That's just all it takes to import it. Uh, let's go ahead and import our impeller now. I have a uh, little pitch blade I made, again, which is made to match this particular experiment. Um, there it is. Let me go ahead and just define the rotation axis. Okay, uh, rotate it about Y, we're done. Um, it has a revolution of 60 RPM, which looks great. Uh, and all right, so, so that's familiar to, to existing users. Now there's a couple new steps here if we wanna do inlets and outlets. The first step is to define a lattice domain. And the easiest option I find is just to use auto, okay? And what's, what it's done here is it's created a bounding box, almost like shrink wrap, if you were, of the smallest cube required to encapsulate this tank, okay? So there are six sides of this cube, and each is as close to the origin as possible in a way that encompasses the furthest extents of the tank. And that's all it takes. It's all you need to do to define the domain. Uh, if you want to specify the domain automatically, that's fine. You can go down here and say define lattice domain manually, and you specify the bottom corner and the upper corner. It, it, it's, it's not hard, but the auto is, is just really trivial to use. And so once I have the domain specified, I can now go ahead and define inlets and outlets. And so let me go ahead and show how I do that uh, and make a comment in the process. So I right click add inlet outlet, and it's prompting me to select a plane uh, that contains the inlet and outlet. So I'm going to start here with this inlet and I need to select one of these six green planes uh, that defines one of these six sides, I should say, of the bounding box that defines that inlet. So I'll kind of click on this one here. Um, it didn't really know which one I clicked because there's redundancy at that location, but I can just toggle through and it, it's indeed it's, one, it's this plane I want. This is where the inlet is uh, touching the boundary. So I, I select that plane. Now it's asking me to select a point on the surface. So what I've got to do here is I've got to choose a point inside this orifice, inside the inlet. It doesn't matter where it is. What the DMT is going to do, it's going to use this point and evoke a two-dimensional flood fill algorithm. It's just going to, from this point forward, flood that plane to fill the extents of that orifice. Okay. So again, you don't need to specify the exact morphology of the inlet or outlet manually. It can be arbitrarily shaped. You just got to give us a seed, say where this is a point inside this orifice on that bounding plane. So I can easily just pick a point right there um, and, uh, and, and select it. I am prompted to enter the hydraulic diameter and the DMT doesn't use this for the flood algorithm per se. It's just instead used for scaling and, and to predict um, you know, Reynolds number ratios and momentum ratio and such. I'll put in a speed. The speed for this inlet is going to be 0.611. Uh, that's purposeful, and that's to uh, to match the inlet velocity, rather inlet flow rate of 0.3 liters per second. Uh, particle concentration. I'm going to have this inlet inject particles. I'm going to have it inject particles of a constant with a concentration of 100. I'm sorry, a million particles per cubic meter. And I'm going to have this injection start at 15 seconds and end at 15.1 seconds. Okay. So the the inlet definition is done now. Uh, let's look through what I did. I have a speed of 
0.611 meters per second. It's a velocity boundary condition. I gave it a hydraulic diameter, um, and I'm ejecting particles. Now, inlets are always on, okay? It's, it's going to be pushing fluid in from the minute the simulation starts. But particles do not always have to be on. And in this case, after 15 seconds of, of spinning time, of impeller spinning time, I'm going to pulse in uh, a, a large number of particles. And in a sense, what I'm going to do with this is calculate RTD and identify any short circuiting. So, okay, I have my uh, my inlet defined. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and define my outlet. Uh, again, I add inlet or outlet. I choose the plane in which it's going to live. It's over here. Um, I choose the correct plane because it gets hard to choose just one in a three-dimensional domain. Uh, and now, now here's an important point. I don't want this to be a velocity boundary. I want it to be a pressure boundary. So I just go ahead and click that. All right, so now it says it's. Uh, I can choose to make it a pressure velocity, a pressure boundary, I'm sorry. Okay, so now it's a pressure boundary condition and I got to go back and select the point and just as before, um, I just got to choose a point inside the orifice, okay? And it'll the code will do the flood algorithm to fill the extents of that uh, orifice up to the walls. So I click there. I put in my hydraulic diameter again. These are 2.5 centimeter inlets and outlets. And uh, this is an outlet, and so I'm not going to have any particles. It, it doesn't make any sense. So let's put zero there. Okay, and so 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 these are my inlets and outlets. I have my inlet again with a specified velocity and a pressure, specified pressure, I'm sorry, particle pulse. Uh, and then I have my outlet with a specified, um, well, it's just an outlet uh, that vacates to a constant pressure. Um, now, at, at this point, I'm done. I can run the simulation. Um, but there are a couple of points worth making uh, as I discuss the inlets and outlets. So I used this auto domain uh, generator, the define lattice domain auto, okay? And that just snapped to the system. And that works perfectly well in as much as my outlets and inlets uh, extend the same distance away from the tank. Let me say that again. This bounding box has six planes, right? Has six planes that define this case, okay? And for any inlets and outlets that touch the same one of these six planes, they have to extend the same distance away from the tank in order for the auto domain to work, okay? So what's gonna happen here is what, let's say I had an outlet that extended this far away. When I do the auto tank, it's gonna snap onto that furthest piece away from the tank and use that to define this particular uh, plane of the, of the system boundary. But this little inlet won't reach that plane and as such, it won't create the boundary condition correctly. So again, if we use auto tank, we have to have the outlets or inlets that are touching one of these six boundary planes all extend to the exact same plane so we get a snug fit. Now for inlets and outlets touching another one of these six planes, it doesn't matter. Like this inlet doesn't have to have the same length as that outlet because they're touching, they're each touching a different one of these six boundary planes. But if we have one with multiple inlets and outlets touching the same plane, they've got to have the same length if we're going to use the auto snap, or rather the auto domain calculator. Uh, if we have, if we're, if we're forced to use a system that has disparate lengths, that's fine. You just have to define the domain manually and make sure it crosses uh, all of those inlets and outlets. Uh, but again, I find it easiest just to make the things right in the first step in, in SOLIDWORKS or, or Creo or whatever, and it just makes setting up the DMT uh, snap. <clears throat> One other little uh, feature I want to show here is this add RTD box. And so this uh, this capability allows us to calculate uh, the residence time distribution at an arbitrary location or rather within an arbitrary volume. Uh, let me define a little, little one centimeter side length box here. Uh, at an arbitrary volume within the domain. Okay. And I'm going to start this at 15 seconds. So what I have here is a little box, and at, in this in this domain, uh, I'm at at 15 seconds. I'm going to start calculating the residence time distribution. Okay. And now this is completely independent of the inlets and outlets. In fact, this little capability uh, can be applied to systems without inlets and outlets, just closed uh, mixing systems. And what you can do is this: is you can predict at that point in space. Of the local residence time distribution and you can apply you can generate lots of these guys as many as you want and calculate as a function of space uh, how the rtd varies and this is useful for for uh for fast chemistry uh, fast chemistry mixing where we have to convolute this rtd with the underlying eddy dissipation rate which we can get correctly from the dmt uh to predict how this chemistry evolves and so again this doesn't have to be in there um, and it doesn't even have to be in there. It doesn't even have to have an open uh, uh, an open tank to uh, to calculate the RTD. It's just a new feature available in in 1.1. Uh, so as I go through and summarize what I've created here, um, 
I'll recognize that my domain is 32 centimeters. Uh, that is the X domain is 32 centimeters, okay? It goes from minus 16 to 16 centimeters. And so when I go back to my simulation, remember how I said resolution is now defined in terms of box length in the X direction? I'm just gonna make that 320. Okay, so what that implies is that I have 320 points in the x direction, and I know that my tank here is, uh, um, sorry, my domain here is 16 to 16, 32 centimeters. So again, it's a, it's a one millimeter resolution. I know my impeller here is 10 centimeters in diameter, thereby giving me 100 lattice points per diameter. And so we're not losing physics per se as we compare this new model or the new version to the previous version. It's just a different way of defining resolution. And the DMT automatically calculates D and T, D being the diameter of the impeller, and T being its, its height. And it only uses T when calculating uh, radio pumping. But either way, the simulation uh, has that resolution. Uh, the runtime, I can't have a 10 second runtime uh, and then have particles being injected at 15 seconds. It makes no sense. Like the code will run, but the particles never be injected. So make that like 150 seconds, uh, just so we have uh, plenty of mixing time. And uh, my particles are all tracers at this point. Okay, so with that, the code's ready to run. Uh, I can do it locally on my laptop. Um, so I'll just hit run and, and it's, uh, hit save and uh, it's done. It's off, it's meshed, it's uh, ready to go. I'll use three processors on this little laptop and uh, it's booting up and, uh, and computing. Um, so again, this will take a minute to start because again, I'm using a $150 laptop from Walmart, but uh, so I don't have any patience for this. But either way, let me show some results now that uh, uh, rather show the output of the simulation uh, that are previously on a more meaningful machine. So let's take an outlook, a, a view here of the output from the simulation. Uh, on this left plane, I'm showing the velocity field, or rather speed, and this would be a movie showing the speed uh, throughout the system as a function of time. And in this right pane, I'm gonna be showing the, uh, the particles that are injected in the system, their dynamics. Um, so let me go ahead and play these. These will play in tandem, and they're both from the same simulation. So there's the, the velocity field. There's no particles yet. We have this high momentum jet uh, really streaking across the top of the tank. And you can already see there's going to be a lot of short circuiting. After 15 seconds, we're going to inject particles and then uh, model where those particles go to predict RTD and short circuiting. There they are. It's pretty cool. They kind of pop in and, uh, and start mixing. And you can really see the effect of short circuiting. I'll quantify that in a minute. But um, let's play that again, at least, at least the injection. Because at this point, the those Velocity field isn't changing much. The speed field isn't changing much. But let's watch that. Uh, let's watch that injection again because it's pretty compelling. So again, it's starting up, starting up, starting up, and then boom, the particles come in. And what we've done here is we've essentially just injected. We've pulse injected particles, and uh, we know information about uh, how long they've been in the system. And so from that data, we can directly calculate uh, the RTD and such. Uh, so let's look at the the actual numbers that come out of this guy. Um, on the left hand side is the experimental data for this exact system. And again, as we expect, it shows pronounced short circuiting and then has a long tail behavior, which is consistent with that of an ideal mix CSTR. Here are predictions from the DMT for that ran I, I did. Um, we get similar behavior in terms of short circuiting and uh, really good agreement in terms of the uh, long tail ideal mixed uh, system behavior. I can superimpose these two and uh, the results are very encouraging. Um, again, so we predict a, a mixing time of about 68.5 seconds. Again, that comes from extracting tau from this exponential decay. Um, it compares very, very favorably to that reported for similar experimental value, experimental systems. And likewise, this peak here, um, it matches quite well. I, I, I think that it might be a little premature that as our peak is shifted a bit to the left. And I think that's because I didn't let the system fully equilibrate. Remember, I injected particles after only 15 seconds. Uh, based on this mixing time, I should let the thing equilibrate for closer to a minute. I think because I didn't let it fully equilibrate, I may have a bit prematurely uh, injected particles and thereby overstated the short circuiting a bit. But big picture, um, I'm really encouraged by that, uh, by that agreement, uh, both in terms of the magnitude of the short circuiting and the long tail uh, mixing time uh, prediction. And again, if you look at this, you, you really see now like the power of a transient LES uh, solver. Let me play both these again. In terms of predicting the, the, the detailed nuances of the flow field, the story of the flow as it were, and again, getting statistics, specifically these injection and short circuiting and residence time statistics that are really, re really couldn't be accessed using a conventional RAND simulation tool. Uh, so I, I think it's very compelling there. 
uh, to get this type of insight from this type of simulation. Combined with the fact that it takes, you know, maybe five minutes to set these things up. There's no meshing, no solid meshing per se. Uh, you can have an arbitrarily complex tank, arbitrary numbers of inlets and outlets, arbitrary numbers of impellers, and it really does nothing to increase the complexity of, of your setup. Uh, that really makes a compelling tool.